We truly are in the golden age of TV. With so many streaming services vying for everyone's attention, there's never been more high quality, mega budget, small screen entertainment right at our fingertips. But the question is, which ones to watch, which ones to look out for, and which ones to get absolutely hyped about? Well, the last one I can kind of help you with. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 20 most hotly anticipated new TV shows of 2022. Number 20, Pam and Tommy. So Pam and Tommy is a miniseries centered around Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee and Baywatch star Pamela Anderson, played here by Lily James, as they navigate their fallout of their private sex tape being released online without their permission in 1995. Craig Gillespie will direct the series, which is already stirring up enormous buzz due to Lily James's dramatic physical transformation into Bombshell Anderson. And if that's not enough, the supporting cast is rounded out by Seth Rogen, Nick Offerman, and Andrew Dice Clay. If the director can find the right tonal balance, this could be one of next year's most perversely entertaining series. Number 19, Avatar The Last Airbender. Ever since M. Night Shyamalan's live-action blockbuster adaptation of The Last Airbender flamed the hell out back in 2010, fans have been clamoring for somebody to finally give the beloved animated series the big-budget, glossy treatment that it totally deserves. At once an adaptation of the source material while also promising to offer something fresh for longtime fans, Netflix's Avatar series is unquestionably one of next year's most fascinating and potential rich redemption projects. Even if the original animated series showrunners ended up quitting the show due to, air quotes, creative differences. But at the very least, there's no chance in hell that it's going to be worse than the Shyamalan movie, so yeah, bring it on. Number 18, Tokyo Vice. This adaptation of crime writer Jake Adelstein's 2009 memoir of the same name documents his relocation to Tokyo in the late 1990s to report on corruption within the city's Vice Squad. Perhaps most excitingly though, Tokyo Vice will also feature Michael Mann's first time behind the camera since 2015's dud movie Black Hat, with the legendary filmmaker directing the very first episode, while the rest will reportedly be helmed by the director of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. With its acclaimed source material, Tokyo Vice has all the potential to be one of next year's must-see crime dramas. Number 17, Willow. As much as streaming services are clearly hell-bent on milking their existing franchises for every drop they're worth, it's tough not to be intrigued by the fact that Ron Howard's 1988 fantasy film Willow of all things is getting a sequel series. Warwick Davis will reprise his role as the titular dwarf sorcerer who joins a party to help a princess rescue her kidnapped twin brother. While perhaps unlikely to become a phenomenon on the level of Disney's Marvel and Star Wars shows, it sure will be fun to see Davis back in this world again. Number 16, From. Every year we're faced with several high-concept sci-fi shows basically touting themselves as The Next Lost, and already earning that reputation is From, a new sci-fi horror series executive produced by the Russo brothers. The show takes place in a mysterious middle American town that prevents anyone who enters from ever leaving. And because that existential terror isn't bad enough, the surrounding forests also seem to contain some nightmarish monsters. The series' first four episodes are going to be helmed by prolific TV director Jack Bender, who fittingly directed more than 30 episodes episodes of Lost, so yeah, the comparison kind of is apt here. Number 15, Moon Knight. Cult fave Marvel hero Moon Knight gets his own six episode series. With the dream cast of Oscar Isaac playing the titular superhero, a marine suffering from disassociative identity disorder who is drawn into a battle with ancient gods. With Big Kev from Marvel already confirming that Moon Knight will also appear in MCU movies following the conclusion of his series, and with an actor like Oscar Isaac in the lead, you'd be silly not to, there is a lot to be excited about here. Number 14, Inventing Anna. The latest show from mega producer Shonda Rhimes is based on Jessica Presler's 2018 New York article about Anna Sorokin, a fraudster who between 2013 and 2017 pretended to be a German heiress in order to scam banks, hotels, and wealthy friends out of money. The brilliant Julia Garner will play Sorokin, likely ensuring that this is one of 2022's most dishy must-see character studies. Number 13, Cabinet of Curiosities. Netflix is getting a double dose of Guillermo del Toro next year with his long gestating stop motion musical Pinocchio film and also a horror anthology series called Cabinet of Curiosities. Consisting of eight stories, the anthology will plumb all manner of horror subgenres, with a bevy of acclaimed horror filmmakers on board. The cast is no less an embarrassment of riches, with the ensemble including Ben Barnes, Crispin Glover, Andrew Lincoln, and Tim Blake Nelson. So, yeah, there's a lot to be excited about. 
Number 12. The After Party Christopher Miller returns with an eight-episode black comedy murder mystery series that takes place at a high school reunion after party which leads to the death of an attendee. Miller will be directing all eight episodes, while working alongside a distinguished cast of comedians including Tiffany Haddish, Sam Richardson, Ben Schwartz, and Dave Franco. This looks like a ton of fun, frankly, and given Miller's pedigree to date, it's easy to be incredibly optimistic about him hitting the mark once again. Number 11. Halo It's a story about Master Chief with a stonking $200 million budget. Yes, I'm on board! Number 10. The Midnight Club Mike Flanagan proved once again with the recently released Midnight Mass that he is a modern-day master of serialized horror storytelling, and so fans surely can't wait to see what he does with his upcoming adaptation of Christopher Pike's 1994 young adult novel, The Midnight Club. The series won't just be a straight adaptation of Pike's book, but also incorporate other Pike novels as well, while still centering around a group of seven terminally ill young adults who meet up every midnight to tell scary stories. When one of them dies, however, strange occurrences begin. Flanagan may be only directing the first two episodes of the series, but it's clear already that his creative stamp is all over this. Number 9. Miss Marvel Of all the upcoming MCU Disney Plus shows, few can tout quite the level of importance of Ms. Marvel, which will tie directly into 2023's Captain Marvel sequel, which just recently wrapped shooting. The show will, of course, unveil the origin story for Kamala Khan, aka Ms. Marvel, a 16-year-old Avengers fan who gains shape-shifting powers and will appear opposite Brie Larson's Carol Danvers in The Marvels. Clearly, there is a lot riding on the show's portrayal of Khan, but from the very little we've seen so far, this looks like it's primed to absolutely absolutely deliver. Number 8. Secret Invasion Mr. Robot writer Carl Bradstreet will oversee Secret Invasion, a six-episode miniseries based on the iconic Marvel comic book arc of the same name centered around the alien scrolls infiltrating every facet of life on Earth. The show will see MCU characters Nick Fury, Maria Hill, and Talos band together to battle the scrolls, while Kingsley Ben Adir has been cast as the primary antagonist. The crew and cast are mostly remaining tight-lipped about the production for now, but this certainly has the potential to be one of the MCU's biggest and most impactful TV shows to date. Number 7. Peacemaker Despite James Gunn's is 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 the Suicide Squad bombing at the box office, Gunn had already wrapped filming the spin-off series Peacemaker, starring John Cena's titular psychopath take on Captain America before the movie was even released. The DC Extended Universe's first ever TV show will explore Peacemaker's origin and chronicle the fallout of the Suicide Squad, with Gunn writing all eight episodes and directing five of them. As the marketing has made so very clear, the show will retain the recent film's irreverent tone, as is to be expected from Gunn, whilst fleshing Peacemaker make it out with a little more nuance. If it's a success, don't be surprised if other DCEU characters are spun off into their own TV shows soon enough. Number 6. House of the Dragon Despite Game of Thrones' eighth and final season souring just about everyone on the entire Enterprise, there's clearly still a tremendous thirst for more George R. R. Martin's world to be explored on screen. House of the Dragon will be based on Martin's 2018 novel Fire and Blood, which is set 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones and depicts both the creation of House Targaryen and the ensuing Targaryen Civil War. From the few glimpses that we've seen so far, it certainly seems to live up to Thrones' glossy epic standard, and as such, could help everyone fall back in love with the IP. Number 5. Obi-Wan Kenobi It's easy to lose track of all of the Star Wars shows currently in development, but one that just about every fan is going to be interested in is Obi-Wan Kenobi. The six-episode limited series is set a decade after Revenge of the Sith and will attempt to bridge the gap between it and A New Hope. Ewan McGregor will of course return to play Obi-Wan, while perhaps just as excitingly Hayden Christensen is reprising the role of Darth Vader. Given that McGregor's portrayal of Obi-Wan is generally accepted to be the strongest part of the rather divisive prequel trilogy, it's enormously satisfying to see his work rewarded with this mythology-expanding series. Number 4. She-Hulk Marvel fans have been begging for a live-action iteration of She-Hulk for years now, and finally, it is set to happen when the great Tatiana Maslany plays Bruce Banner's cousin Jennifer Walters. Comedy writer Jessica Gao will act as the show's head writer, while the supporting cast will include Mark Ruffalo as Banner, Tim Roth reprising the villainous role of Abomination once more, and Jamila Jamil as the super-strong supervillain Titania. With Big Kev promising that She-Hulk will effectively be a half-hour legal comedy, it'll hopefully be able to carve out a niche for itself as a a totally singular and unique MCU series. Number 3. The Last of Us 
Beyond Halo, the other great hope for video game adaptations is HBO's take on Naughty Dog's masterful post-apocalyptic action game, The Last of Us. With the game's immense popularity and groundbreaking cinematic storytelling, it should translate into a TV series format pretty comfortably. Better still, Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey have been quite perfectly cast as Joel and Ellie, while the supporting cast includes Gabriel Luna and Nick Offerman. HBO is the perfect home for a show like this, ensuring that it will be able to push the boundaries of violence and visceral, emotionally charged story telling unimpeded, and with the 10-episode season taking roughly a year to film, clearly a great deal of care is being taken to get it right. Fingers crossed. Number 2. The Sandman Neil Gaiman has been attempting to get his beloved comic book The Sandman adapted to the big screen for a whole 30 years, and after countless failed attempts, it's finally getting the big-budget TV series treatment next year. The 11-episode first season has a budget so massive even HBO turned it down, and given the ambitious, fantastical ideas contained within Gaiman's comic, it's encouraging that Netflix has evidently spared no expense bringing it to fruition. Considering how long fans have been waiting for The Sandman to get the adaptation it deserves, hopefully all this talent and money won't be going to waste. And number 1. The Lord of the Rings By far the most highly anticipated series due for release next year is Amazon's mega-budget eight-episode adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. Set in the Second Age of Middle-earth, thousands of years before the events of The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings, the show has been cloaked in an enormous amount of secrecy throughout its lengthy production in New Zealand, such that we still don't know which cast members are playing what characters. With Amazon spending roughly $250 million to acquire the IP rights and pledging $1 billion to produce five seasons, the streaming platform clearly wants this to be the next Game of Thrones, and with the resources at their disposal, they've got a fair shot at actually achieving this rather lofty goal. And there we go, my friends. Those were the 20 most hotly anticipated new TV shows of 2022. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, because you deserve all of the best things in life, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? Big love to you, my friend. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.